प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू माय चैनल एंड प्रेस बेल आइकन सो यू विल नेवर मिस एनी अपडेट फॉर अपकमिंग वीडियोस एंड डोंट फॉरगेट टू लाइक From the timing itself, it is clear that we are going to focus on the some processing part of uh, tropical food beverages. Uh, if I am taking the uh, example of tropical food juice, uh, let's say this is pineapple juice. Pineapple is one of the most produced food in as well as the most produced tropical food in the across the world in the country. So the major plus oil is offered in this uh, pineapple juice is that uh, it may be from microbial spoils. Or it may be from uh, enzymatic spots. So, from the bacteria and yeast mold growth, uh, it may be the gas formation or off flavor development within the product itself. And if we see, with respect to the enzymatic spoilers, the major degradation uh, with respect to the brown within the juice, that is a topmost one. And also the technique in the HPS, uh, this is also responsible for the phase separation within the food juices. So this is I'm giving one of the examples for the all these chemical food juices, and this is the same and similar for other food juices also. So immediate remedy is that it is these type of spoils are actually limiting the shelf life of the food juice. So what we can do? The basic solution is that uh, FDA has recommended that we can pasteurize the food juices, and the uh, condition we need to achieve that. The process intensity of the applied such that it can reduce the at least five percent reduction in the target microbes. But this target entity, despite the target entity, the most crucial thing in case of any type of preservation process. Uh, uh, the definition has been revised again that the preservation is the killing of the entity which are of human health interest. So now the health interest is mainly because of pathogen. And if I am concerning about enzymes and other spoilers inside, uh, enzymes as well as microbes, we have to take care of that also. So, if the solution is that the common existing process is the thermal treatment of the juices, that is totally uh, typically done as that, followed by harvesting, then washing, then extraction, and the typical heat treatment is near about the 90 to 95 minutes in the day, and the typical process time is within 3 to 5 minutes. And I am talking about pasteurization or the steroids. So, followed by cooling, and even after that, we need to add some preservatives or other additives, and as for example, sulfide. From this perspective, that the major drawbacks of this herbal treatment is that degradation of the nutrients. As the previous speakers has already mentioned, the degradation of the nutrients and the phytochemicals during the treatment, that is a major concern while we are talking about the vegetable the fruits and vegetable waste products which are very much rich in the, these phytochemicals. So alternatives are there. The consumer also, the today's trade is that they always look for the, the product with having the shelf life, extended shelf life, as well as the minimal process. That means they always look like the product which are going to be consumed, that should be as same or similar to that of the face, so that you can get the maximum benefit from the fruit juices. And it should be nutritionally superior. That we don't want the inferior fruit juices, the like the uh, common thermal treated juices, that in which the vitamin C and then you can see it is already lost by 80 percent. So why should I consume it? So alternative is that we need to go for the non thermal treatment. Here there is uh, some confusion or something other understanding within the uh, uh, identity of food technology. That how can we replace the thermal technology by having the same extent? Just I want to answer, uh, that means give some example here. That uh, extending the cell life is basically the treatment and we are targeting to inactivate the microorganism or inhibit the microorganism or restrict the growth of the microorganism. Applying heat means, applying heat treatment means we are trying to apply some stress on the microorganism and that stress in terms of heat energy. Can that energy be replaced by any other form of energy? So that I can get the same inactivation, but simultaneously retaining the nutrition quality of the fruit. That is the concept behind the power thermal processing. And we have already uh, said that the, one of the biggest, uh, having a potent, most uh, largest potential of the power uh, thermal technology is the hydration processing. But the same thing, 
the heat energy has been replaced by pressure energy. In case of other things, that is the ones with electric field processing, their electrical energy has been serving the same purpose as of the heat energy. Another possible technology is that light energy. That is, we are going to apply the light energy instead of the heat energy and we are trying to achieve the same efficacy that is of targeting the inactivation of 5 log cycle microbes. Here we make of the different mechanism of this pulse light technology is that this is a burst of short light. That means this is not a continuous light here, it is lighting. This is a burst in pulsation, that means the effectivity will be maximum. And the, this is like a camera flash. Once one on a single camera flash is on my eyes, you can realize that just we can just and if there is number of pulses on that eye, it will be done. The same principle has been used here. This is a short burst of five pulses and it is exposed on the full surface and having the capability of inactivating the microbes. And both uh, in 1996, the FDA has already approved the pulse light technology as a preservation technology for the other fruits. So basically the, if you see that summarize the concept of your pulse light is that it is a non-thermal technology as the temperature increase during the treatment is not more than 20 degrees as of now we have recorded and uh, it can it has the potential to reduce the microbial load as well as it can affect the enzyme activity and it also retains an efficient profile. And these are the hypothesis as well as experimental proof. Now the <coughs> job is that if we can briefly summarize the mechanism of this uh, pulse light technology is that it, the inactivation of the microorganism may happen in three different pathways. This is photochemical, photothermal, as well as photophysical. Okay. Right? Uh, this pulse light technology is totally different from continuous UV light. So let's take if you have one stone, if you are just putting it from here and it is falling down, it is not going to happen. But if you are repeating the same state for a number of thousands of times, then it has something different. So the energy associated with continuous UV light, it may be maximum up to 1000 watt. But in case of pulse light energy, the maximum energy you can achieve that is 35 megawatt. So you can imagine the extent of energy we are going to produce that is exposed to the food. But without increasing the temperature significantly for a sufficient time. So the objective of our study is that we are going to take some fruit juices and we are going to expose it to the pulse light technology. And we are going to see the efficacy, basically the microbial inactivation. Simultaneously, we are going for or obtain the safe as well as stable juice. I am referring to two different technology that is microbiologically safe and enzymatically stable. So, this is the major target of the fruit juice industry to obtain the higher amount of your shelf life. So, different types of combination we have tested, and we are going to present only the limited one. And we are not going to study the interior things. The response we have measured that is an exact message. The, we have taken uh, the polyphenol oxidant and peroxidase as the indicator exact as this, this enzymes are responsible for the browning in the juice. And as well as the color and other attributes, because we are mainly focused on that. Even after the treatment, what is the loss in the nutrition properties that we need to change? And microbial count, and we have taken the, only the natural microbial present in the juice. One other thing is that this is your pulse light, pulse light, and this is the sample tray we are taking. And the distance we are increasing from the light with respect to that, the fluid state that is your energy density, it is going to change. Less of the distance, more will be the exposed to the full cell. And that is capable of increasing to the maximum extent of the microbe. So here, just the trend is that. that for the same 2.4 kV, if I am going to treat the samples for 60 seconds, it has a number of pulses of 94. And we have fixed the number of pulses per second as 3. So this is the 94 pulses and the corresponding fluence is 9.1. And I want to mention here that FDI has approved 12 joule per centimeter square as per their record for the preservation purpose. So we have kept the limit of this preservation uh, strain with less than 12 and this is a 9 on an average and increasing the treatment time you have obviously your total transport energy which is going to be increased. So the first and foremost thing is that what is the extent of your inactivation? 
in your microbial world by the after the activation of your pulsar. And we can see that out of 75 different combinations we have used, these are the three typical combinations. There we can achieve the 5 log second reduction. So this is the 2.4 kilo volt having the 1 millisecond that is for 2 minutes and 187 pulses. And also you can achieve the 2.1 kilo volt having the treatment time increase up to 2.5 degrees. So we, are, we can say that it has the potential to pasteurize your food juices. Now we have to see what will happen to the other quality attributes. Here also the previous example was with respect to pineapple juices. Then we have taken three different juices having the different pH values, having the different sensitivities. Also we have combined the fruit juices with pineapple, amla and coconut having other mixed fruit juices and we are going to see that for the same extent we are getting the final cellular That means it has the capability to preserve the food and we can say that it has the capacity to pasteurize the fruit juices. Now moving towards the same for the yeast and mold count, we are getting the same value of hydroxide reduction. Moving towards the other enzymatic activity, the, as I said that we have taken the indicated microorganisms of polyphenol oxidase and peroxidase having the capability of your uh, browning enzymes and browning causing enzymes and we can see that here the effect of pulse light can be compromised with respect to the thermal treatment. Because thermal treatment, you can see that the extent of your Inactivation of PPO is a more resistant compared to your peroxidase, and from all these fruit juices, this plane is same, as well as the equivalent inactivation of the polyphenol oxidase is possible by both thermal and perspective. And I and, and would think this is the biggest conclusion we can, have, we can achieve in the last one and a half years work on this perspective now. And the thing is that now we are totally concerning about that what is the nutrition profile within the food. Uh, fruit juices, uh, having after the exposure to the pulse light treatment. And you can see that this is the total ascorbic acid loss. And you can compare the untreated with the 90 degrees centigrade for 5 minutes. This is your pulse light treatment sample. And the loss is corresponding to this is your untreated. The loss for thermal is maximum. And the loss in the pulse light treatment is with respect to thermal, it is less. So that is always beneficial to treat the fruit juice sample by the pulse light compared to. Go for the thermal treatment. Next one is your color change. Always the effects of the fruit juices is the most significant thing before buying the fruit juices sample. Because when you go to the market, you always see the what is the color and what is the appearance. If it looks like brown color, you are not going to purchase it. So we have uh, uh, evaluated the brown color and the total color change associated with the, all this processing. And you can see that for the delta ester and the browning index for the pulse light treatment juices at the very minimum. And that is the superiority with respect to the thermal treatment juices. Moving forward, moving forward towards the favorite candidate, you can also say that the loss in the thermal treated samples is almost 50% compared to your untreated one, whereas your pulse light treatment is only about 15 to 18%. The same thing as we train mentioned on all other fruit juices also. Seventh thing, DPPH has a similar thing in your antioxidant capacity. DPPH is the indicator and representation of your how much antioxidant potential the juice has and juice possesses after the treatment. And also the same thing as of the families, you can find out here the loss in the thermal treatment is a maximum and compared to the pulse line it is a superior, yeah, that is inferior one in the thermal retail and the pulse light retail samples are the superior. Next one, uh, so overall we can prove that or we can conclude that the pulse light treatment has the efficacy and it has the potential to be to replace the thermal pasteurization stain for the fruit juice. But the second thing is that at the previous speakers have already mentioned, we need to see the, what is the changes happening in the phytochemical profile during the treatment once we are going to claim that this is superior. So we have just tried what is the changes in the phytochemical profiles in the samples and you can see that for all this phyto, all this pulse light treatment for 1.8, 2.1, 2.4 kilo volts having the same intensity of 187 pulse rate and 120 seconds all those are almost retaining the same as of the the control one. And the thermal treated one that is the next. The same thing for your 
for your family clusters also there are some degrees that is of you to we can explain that that is of photothermal effect for this as a result of photochemical effect because the uh, inactivation of this all these all these degradation of these phytochemicals are due to the photothermal that is the degradation of the covalent bonds due to the localized heat transfer we can see that in microseconds if you can analyze the temperature rise during that it can is around 15 to 55 degrees centigrade and that is responsible for this degradation same thing for your family plasmids the opposite thing the almost same as well as i was going to previous figure mentions there the increase in the bio availability of the family cluster plasmids after the trip same thing after the total Uh, vitamin C, that is a combination of your ascorbic acid plus the dehydroascorbic acid. We can see that the total amount of ascorbic acid maintained or retained after the treatment is of the same compared to your herbal treatment. So overall, I can conclude that uh, personal treatment it has a potential to replace the thermal personalization system if the uh, the treatment intensity is at least 2.4 kilovolt. Having a one minute cycle process for two minutes, and we can say the influence associated to this treatment condition is near about nine to ten joule per centimeter square. Followed by for different pH samples, that is your mass melon juice, bar juice, and this mixed beverage, it has it requires something extra pulses, that is your two eighty one pulses, but the influence associated with it almost within the range of below twelve joule per centimeter square. Phenyl profiles in the juices are well retained after the pulsatile treatment, and it is very much superior compared to your thermal treatment. But when we are talking about the enzyme inactivation, we cannot say that pulsatile is the self-sufficient method to inactivate 100% of the enzyme activity. I must say here, it should be com combined with other technologies like ultrasound or the mild heat treatment up to 50 degrees centigrade to. Achieve that one log cycle or hundred percent reduction in the pulsatile oxidase or peroxidase. So, finally, I can conclude that pulsatile treatment, along with other hurdles like ultrasound or mild heat treatment, has the potential to replace the thermal persuasion for the fruit juice. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I must congratulate my research team as well as. The funding body, DST SIB, as well as that basis grant for this project, and also I must thank the organizing committee of the Infocom for providing me this opportunity to address this live gathering on this topic, and also I must thank my team members from my India side, ICD uh, Mumbai, as well as from my University of Bollywood and Germany side. Thank you all.